And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make one of the most useful jigs for your shop or the job site. And that's a fence for your circular saw. Okay, well that was one of my very first videos more than 10 years ago. And as you can see, a lot has changed in the shop, except for this jig. I'm still using this jig, and it's one of the most used jigs in the shop. I'm making this one for my son Walter's saw. That's this one right here. And then at the end of the video, I'll throw together a little then and now montage so you can see what the shop used to look like and some of the changes that have happened over the years. To make this jig, you're going to need two sheets of plywood, a sheet of quarter inch and a sheet of half inch. Let's just pretend that these are two full sheets because you're not going to be able to buy small pieces like I have here. The first thing you're going to do is use your half inch piece as a fence and you'll measure over on your quarter inch piece and make a mark at eight inches on both sides. Next, I'll align the factory edge of the half inch plywood to the mark and clamp it in place. And I'm gonna do that on both ends. I don't wanna accidentally cut into my work table, so I propped the plywood up with some old two by fours to support the material during the cut. Next, I'll adjust the depth of the blade, so I'm just about a quarter inch below the material I'm cutting. Well, I almost made a pretty big screw up there. I have to measure from the teeth of the blade to the edge of the plate, which is three and a half inches, and move the fence over on both sides another three and a half inches. I was going to try to re-record all that stuff, but it's better just admitting my mistake and moving on. Okay, let's do this again. Eight and three and a half inches is 11 and a half. So again, I'm going to make that mark on both sides and clamp the half inch plywood at the mark. This time I didn't forget to account for the base plate and I'm gonna measure from the edge of the plywood and make a mark at each end at seven and three quarters. Now I'll clamp the quarter inch plywood at that mark. I wanted to take a minute and let you know about a 72 hour, 70% off promotion I'm running on seven of my project plans. These projects include the Walnut Sofa Table Writing Desk, the Solid Cherry Dovetail Step Stool, the Adjustable Saw Horses, the Indoor Outdoor End Tables, the White Oak Lily Table, the Cherry Entrance Table, and the Modern Walnut Cabinet. The projects in this bundle range from beginner to intermediate slash advanced, but really something for everyone. If you want to take advantage of this 72 hour, 70% 70 off promotion, click on the link in the description below. Okay, now these will be the two pieces of the jig. This is the quarter inch plywood. Pay no attention to the fact that one side is painted, it's just the plywood I had in the shop here. This is what the saw will run on or rest on, and the half inch plywood will be the fence. I need to attach the quarter inch plywood to the half inch plywood, and to do that, I'll pre-drill and countersink a few holes in the back of the quarter inch plywood. Now I'm using a combination of wood glue and 5 8 long screws and I'll attach the quarter inch plywood to the half inch plywood keeping the back flush. With the half inch plywood fence attached to the base of the jig, I'll run the saw over the jig one more time with the side of the base plate up tight against the fence. That'll cut about a quarter of an inch off of the jig and give me a perfect measurement between the inside edge of the blade and the outside edge of the saw's plate. Okay, now the jig is finished, 
As you can see, it's an eight foot long jig, which is great for ripping full sheets of plywood. If you don't need the full eight feet, you could always cross cut it at five. The five foot section would be great for cross cutting full sheets of plywood, and the three foot section would, would be just more manageable for smaller cross cuts. If you do need the long jig, I suggest making a second one, and then you've got an eight, five, and three, and you'll be able to get a lot of projects with those three different lengths of jigs. So let's go ahead and cross cut this piece of quarter inch plywood so I can show you how it works. Let's say I want this piece of plywood cross cut at 94 inches. I'll pull from one end and make a mark at 94 inches on both sides. Next I'll put the jig right at those marks and use squeeze clamps to hold the jig in place. Now you can see that that's perfectly flush and that the saw runs along the platform of the jig. And if we take a measurement, it's gonna be right at 94 inches. Okay, well 10 years later, and I'm still using this jig design. In fact, I've been using this jig design now for almost 30 years when my friend Bill Wackowitz showed me how to make it all those years ago. So really a great jig to have in your shop. I will be making a few more of these since I bought my Three Sons circular saws this year for the holidays. And it's just a really useful jig to have in the shop. I do want to take a minute and thank everybody for sticking with me all these years. It's been a, a lot of fun, kind of a major transformation in the shop, a life transformation. This is my job and it's really all due to your support. So thanks so much. And stick around, take a look at how much this shop has changed over the years. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time. So if you'd like to see how the job turned out, you could go to johnpeters.com and search countertop. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.